Welcome to the Casual Birder Podcast. I'm Susie Buttress. As a casual birder, I take time to watch birds as I go about my daily tasks. In my show, I'll tell you about the wild birds I've seen, speak with other enthusiasts, take bird walks, and share stories from listeners around the world. In episode 70, I look back on the casual birding moments that filled me with joy during 2019, and I look forward to what 2020 will bring. I also asked you to share your favourite birding moments with me and what wonderful stories you told. At the turn of the year, it's a great time to think back over the wonderful birds I've seen during 2019 and to pick out my favourite casual birding moments. I was very lucky to travel a fair bit this past year, but I've delighted in seeing the birds around me, no matter where I was. In January, I started a regular weekend bird watch from my bedroom window. I wanted to see how the birds visiting my garden changed over the year and I intended to upload my results to the BTO, the British Trust for Ornithology, Garden Watch website. My regular garden visitors included magpie, blackbird, robin, dunnock, blue tit, great tit and wood pigeon. A red-legged partridge often visited during those times as well. I'm sorry to say that my record keeping became sporadic after the first month and I'm going to attempt to be more consistent in 2020. In February, we travelled to San Diego for a few days, before taking a tour by sea along the coast of Mexico. One day in San Diego, I looked for birds around the streets of La Jolla while my husband went kayaking. My favourite birding moment from that day was when I noticed an Anna's hummingbird land on the side of a palm and flash its throat colours in the sunlight, something I'd never seen before. There's a hummingbird just flying up into the sky. Oh, it's landing on the side of a... Oh my goodness, it's landed on the side of a palm tree and an absolute flash of cherry red or bright pink, neon pink almost, is showing. That is stunning. That was a real surprise. It just landed on the side of a palm tree and the sunlight caught the the neck feathers. So I think that's an Anna's hummingbird. That vacation, we would travel along the Pacific coast of Baja, California, with naturalist Mark Carbardine to see whales and other cetaceans. Being at sea and visiting the small islands also gave us opportunities to see the local bird life. 49 bird species were spotted by the group while on the tour. I only positively identified 43 of them, so that's all that went on my personal list for that trip. However, 24 of those birds were lifers for me, a lifer being a bird species that I saw for the first time. And that's one of the wonderful things about travelling, even in your own country. So many of the birds seen will be new ones. Particular favourites on that tour were the ones I found and identified all by myself, like the black-throated sparrow. I interviewed Mark Carbardine for my show one evening at the end of the tour, and a particular memory was the large number of brown pelicans that arrived to eat the fish that had been attracted to the lights of the boat. The pelicans almost landed on the boat as we spoke, a Mark said a wingtip of one brushed past his face at one point. Following the whale watching tour, I spent a week on land in Baja California with my husband, which led to two memorable birding moments. The first moment, well, day really, was the episode I recorded while sitting in the garden of our vacation rental, watching the birds that turned up. I guess it was lazy of me, yet it was very exciting to just sit still and watch what birds were already used in the garden to forage. Mockingbirds, hooded orioles, northern cardinals, cactus wrens and house sparrows all turned up during the day. Again, some of these were lifers for me, like the orange-crowned warblers and McGillivray's warbler. Other birds I had seen before, but I hadn't had the chance to observe them properly. There was one bird that I heard that sounded like a space movie laser. It kind of sounded like, piao, piao. I actually got out of my seat and slowly walked through the garden, trying to track it down. I was very pleased when I realised the sound was being made by a northern cardinal. That's a call I won't forget now I've heard it. The second memorable moment was bittersweet. I'd been looking out for a pyroloxia during my time in Mexico. A pyroloxia is a desert bird closely related to the northern cardinal and it's found in northern Mexico and the American southwest. On the final morning, I potentially saw one. And being aware they could be mistaken for female cardinals, I took some photos of the bird to compare later with my cardinal photos. Just afterwards, I managed to get a really lovely slow motion video of a Zantu's hummingbird taking nectar from a flower. 
Zantu's hummingbirds are endemic to that region, meaning that they are only found there. I was really pleased with the video, it was in focus, and I'd managed to film a complete sequence including the approach to a flower, the bird feeding from it, and then flying away. I could tell it was a really good piece, and I was looking forward to sharing it when I got home. Because I was so keen to identify the pyroloxia, I copied those pictures over to my iPad to verify straight away that it wasn't just a female cardinal. Unfortunately, when I later tried to download that day's photos and videos, something went wrong with the disc, and I lost over a thousand photos. Gone was the perfect Xantu's hummingbird video. Gone was video of the enormous lizards that were sunning themselves just outside our room. But at least I had the verification photos of the pyroloxia, confirming another lifer. At Easter, I visited the Gower Peninsula and recorded an interview and bird walk with wildlife educator and presenter Dan Rouse. I plan to release that episode soon. I've been battling with cleaning up the audio as it was recorded on a very windy cliff top. I was also unwell and had almost totally lost my voice. But we did have a wonderful walk and Dan is a real treasure trove of bird information. I know you're going to enjoy that episode. The afternoon before meeting Dan, I walked along the route and happened to catch sight of a kestrel pair mating on the cliff edge. I don't think I'd ever even seen a pair of kestrels together before, let alone mating ones, so I was really thrilled to have witnessed that scene. In June, I visited Los Angeles for my other big vacation of the year. I was there to attend a podcast fan event, Max FunCon, a weekend of podcasts and activities hosted by the Maximum Fun Network, whose shows I support. While in LA... I recorded a bird walk with LA comic Kimberly Clark at Stowe Canyon Nature Reserve in Burbank. That episode is also in the lineup for early 2020. We had a great walk, seeing lots of scrub jays along with house finches, spotted towhees and turkey vultures. But I particularly remember, as we were finishing the walk and closing the interview, a very persistent mockingbird calling out in a tree nearby. Its song will definitely feature in that episode, I was going to say, so listen out for it, but you won't be able to miss it. After Kimberly left, I carried on birdwatching for a short while and got another lifer. A male phenopepler flew across the canyon and landed on a shrub. Phenopeplers are also known as silky flycatchers and they're related to waxwings. I'd seen this bird in my guidebook and knew the features to look for. Glossy black plumage, conspicuous white wing patches when it flew, black crest and red eye. So when I saw it fly across, I was able to confirm the ID very quickly. A major birding moment for me came a few days later, when one of my favourite podcasters, Mark Gagliardi from We Got This with Mark and Hal, agreed to come on a recorded bird walk with me. I was thrilled to spend time with both Mark and Hal at Max FunCon, and to have the opportunity to introduce Mark to some of Lake Arrowhead's birds was fantastic. He was a delight to accompany around the grounds. He showed real interest in the birds and told some very funny anecdotes. In LA, I was seeing hooded orioles. It's a bright yellow bird. Um, That's the oriole that I'm used to seeing in pictures for the baseball team. So the Baltimore oriole looks kind of like that, but it's got a black head. This yellow one is the one we have here. Yeah, with the eye stripe. Every individual detail that you talk about sounds like something a Bond villain has. This is the one with the eye stripe. This is the one with the blue plume. All of these are Bond villain traits. (laughs) You can hear the walk in episode 64. Back home in England in July, I recorded an episode in my back garden, enjoying the birds that came to visit, including a friendly rook and a red kite flying overhead. In August, I spent a weekend in Rutland at the bird fair. This has now become a regular fixture in our year, and I don't know why it took me so long to actually go. I really enjoy the mix of talks and events, and I'm always inspired by the enthusiasm of the speakers. The display tents give a great opportunity to find out more about wildlife gardening, travel and birding holidays, artwork, binoculars and accessories. And the best bit is seeing old friends and making new ones. Last year we met up with Mark Carwardine and some of the people that were on our Mexican whale watching tour. We had hoped to get out birding while there, as the previous year we had taken a lovely farm walk and seen yellowhammers. However, the weather was atrocious and we ended up spending time back at our accommodation, looking at the brochures we'd picked up and dreaming about future potential vacations. In September, I attended the London Podcast Festival. 
I was delighted to have the opportunity to present a panel there on passion podcasts alongside Sam and Louise from the 90 Minutes or Less Film Festival podcast. It was a fantastic weekend, seeing live shows, meeting amazing podcasters and seeing inside my first green room. I highly recommend attending a podcast festival if you're able. At the end of September, I took part in International Podcast Day by raising awareness about the wonderful world of podcasting. I'm always looking for opportunities to spread the word about podcasts. I made cupcakes with icing headphones on them and stood in the public area at my workplace, handing out leaflets about my show and suggesting others that people might like to try. I created some lists of recommended podcasts, including other bird podcasts, on podchaser.com. Podchaser is a great site and you can post reviews of podcasts there. Hint, hint and find out about which other shows your favourite hosts and guests have been on. I must give a shout out to my co-workers Andrew, Campbell and Doros, who already listened to this show and stopped by my stand. In October, I took a mini break in Arundel with JB for our 25th wedding anniversary. We stayed at an absolutely wonderful cottage called the Cow Barn, which had views from the garden over farmland to Arundel in the distance. The weather, as usual, was absolutely awful but we spent two days at the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust Reserve and also did some early morning bird watches from the garden. This led to one of my most magical and awesome bird experiences. Early on the Sunday morning, while it was still dark, I could hear a tawny owl calling. I tried to get a recording of the owl by placing my recorder out of the door, but the owl was quite distant. A pale shape flew over as I hung out of the door. I thought it might have been the little egret that I'd seen in the farm field the day before, but I couldn't be sure because of the darkness. The owner of the cow barn had said that there had been barn owls in the area in the past, but she hadn't seen them for a long while. In the hopes that this was a barn owl, I quickly put on my coat and over trousers and stood outside in the first glimmers of dawn. As I stood at the edge of the garden, I could see the pale shape of a bird flying over the field ahead of me. I was looking down into the valley and could see it was sort of following a hunting pattern backwards and forwards over the field, It was definitely a barn owl. I watched as it hunted in the early dawn light and then I realised it was flying towards me. Before I knew what was happening, it landed on a fence post not eight feet from me. I froze because I didn't want to scare it. It was breathtaking. It turned its head to look at me and I could see its full heart-shaped white face and big eyes, the caramel flecks on its white breast and the beautiful plumage on its wings. It moved its head while looking at me, as if it was working out if I was of interest or not. I stayed stock still. After a few seconds, it seemed to decide that perhaps it didn't want to be so close to me, and it flew off to a post much further away. I drew in a breath and realised I hadn't been breathing as I didn't want to scare it away. That's the closest I've ever been to a barn owl in the wild. As my recorder was still running from trying to record the tawny owl, I kind of hoped the barn owl would hiss at me so I could have the recording to share, but actually I'm just glad to have had those three or four seconds with the owl looking at me. As it got a little lighter, the owl went off hunting again. I realised there were actually two barn owls in the field. I saw them both together briefly before they flew out of sight into the next field, and that was the last I saw of them. November brought the second anniversary of this show. I decided to book another birding weekend away and this time to the Isle of Wight. I knew that Kieran Levine from the Facebook group lived there so I asked him and a few others if they'd like to join me for a bird walk to celebrate. Kieran was the only one available but I'm so glad he was. We had the most wonderful walk which I hope you listened to in episode 68 even though it was awful weather and we got very wet. Kieran is an experienced bird watcher and posts wonderful photos in the Facebook group He's recently produced a book inspired by the birds he sees, with photographs and haiku verses for each species. And so to December. My most recent episode, the interview with Stephanie Seymour, was actually recorded in October. I had a great time speaking with her and learning about both the birds she sees and the origins of her album, There Are Birds. I'm very pleased that both Stephanie and Kieran are such active members of the Facebook group. The links for Kieran's book and Stephanie's album are in the show notes. I spent the end of December on vacation in Cornwall, staying on the coast near St Austell. I put a feeder up in the garden containing sunflower hearts 
And within an hour, there were blue tits and a robin checking it out. And during the week there, I sat outside many times, wrapped up warmly against the cold, and watched the local birds either visit or fly by. As we had a sea view, I was able to watch gannets diving in the bay, and we even saw a pod of dolphin feeding in the distance on Christmas Day. Birds seen from the garden included buzzards, ravens, sparrowhawk, kestrel, a peregrine falcon one time, and regularly in the garden four species of tit, coal, great, blue and long-tailed, along with robin, dunnock and wren. On the last day of 2019, we travelled back home and stopped off at Stover Country Park, near Exeter in Devon. It was a great way to spend the last day of the vacation, and I got to hand feed a robin, great tit and blue tit, which is something that really does give me a great deal of joy, even though I'm just a bird table to them. I haven't yet consolidated my lists from 2019, apart from my garden list of 25 species, although that is something I plan to do in this year. But these individual moments and memories are really precious to me. Thank you to all my wonderful guests that joined me during 2019. And the biggest thanks of all go to you for listening to the show. An extra credit if you told others about it. So, looking forward into 2020, I have a few things that I plan to do. I'll update my life list, keep a garden and a year list, submit an e-bird list every time I go birding, write more blogs on my website, casualbirder.com. I plan some mini birding breaks, maybe Wales, definitely the Isle of Wight again, and definitely the bird fair, and of course the London Podcast Festival, where I may or may not see birds. I have some exciting interviews and bird walks planned, and although I won't be travelling to America or Canada, on my trips last year I recorded plenty of bird song and calls, as well as some solo bird walks, and I look forward to sharing these recordings with you amongst my local bird episodes. Oh, and I'll also be taking part in the Big Garden Bird Watch on the weekend of the 25th to the 27th of January. I hope you'll do this too. If you're in the UK, sign up for the Big Garden Bird Watch at rspb.org.uk. The survey has been running for over 40 years. You don't have to have a garden to take part. You can make your count in a local park or other outdoor space. Just choose an hour over that weekend and record the birds you see. It's an important piece of citizen science and over half a million people regularly take part. This snapshot of our local birds allows the RSPB to monitor trends and see which species are doing well and which might be declining. I'll put the link in the show notes. I asked you to tell me about your memorable birding moments from 2019 and had a lovely response across all of the various social media channels. On Instagram, the Jasper Patch said, We were kayaking on the lake, and I had already detoured once to pick up a beer can floating in the water. I was on my way to another, when I realised it was a bird. Thankfully, I had a camera and binoculars in my dry bag, always ready. It was a beautiful red-necked phalarope, a lifer for me, and it turned out it was also a new county record. So tiny and delicate. It makes eversets look chunky. Blue Octgal from Southwest Maine said, My biggest surprise was having bluebirds over winter in my yard for the first time. J underscore Graham 10 said, I saw an osprey swoop and catch a fish in Clandegveth Reservoir in August. Incredible. Andrew Weidman Photography in Pennsylvania said, I spotted and got to photograph an American bittern at a community park near my work. That was the first one I ever saw, and I understand they're secretive birds rarely seen. I can tell you it looked like something Dr Seuss would have drawn in his books. Martin Elstwick from Song by Song podcast said that his memorable moment was seeing Tasmanian wedge-tailed eagles. He said, It was very exciting to see these birds in Tasmania driving through the interior. On Twitter, at Eleanor Love posted a photo and said her favourite memory was of a keel-billed toucan feeding in gallon jug in Belize. And it's a pretty amazing photograph. At TJ's Garden said his memory happened on the 10th of December, the day before his daughter was born. I saw an acorn woodpecker just sitting on a power line outside the garden where I work in Bakersfield, California. Oh, and congratulations, TJ, on the arrival of your daughter. At Northwest Nosh says, 
Moving to Levensholm and finding Highfield Country Park right on my doorstep, walking along and hearing the bullfinches, managed to see a pair earlier in the year too. Also, waking up to a grey wagtail just hanging out in my horrible backyard last week made my day. At Campbell Barker 1 said, Discovering the joy of bird watching while on safari in South Africa. We had a guide who was really into birds, made every moment interesting. The best bird was mouse bird with its long tail. At Alan Davis Bird said, Hmm, tough. 2019 has been amazing for birds, starting with shoebill in the swamps of Uganda. Even though the vast throngs of king penguins on South Georgia were a mind-blowing experience, I think being just feet away from a shoebill on a beautiful sunny African day just pips the penguins, but only just. And do check out Alan's website for guided birdwatching holidays and day trips in North Wales and further afield. Find out more at birdwatchingtrips.co.uk. And from the Facebook group, Karin left this lovely message. Hi there, Susie. It's Karin here from Olu in Finland, uh, just on the coast at the north part, where we, quite close to where we meet Sweden. And uh, I saw you were interested in our best birding moments of 2019 to share in the New Year's episode. So hello also to everybody in podcast land. Um, it was really difficult to try to work out the best birding moment. Um, this year, this past year, I've kind of just reacquainted myself with an old friend, and that is going bird watching. And I've spent many hours with uh, alone or with a with a friend of mine checking what's out there, and it, it's just been a great great year. So finding a highlight was really difficult. Um, I think it had to be when I was on. This was in summer, and I was with a friend on an island, quite a large island, uh, not as big as the Isle of Wight, but that sort of size. And we were in a little harbour that uh, isn't a birding hotspot as far as I know, but we'd become aware that there was a, a group of white-tailed eagles there. And uh, it was getting on to the late afternoon, and one of the youngsters did a few flights over us. We were right by the shore. And then, amazingly, just 50 metres from us, even less, it flew down, skimmed its claws through the water, and missed the fish it came back up and it hadn't caught it and uh it came back and it made a second attempt and it had caught the fish i think it was a salmon um and it flew off and uh it kind of flew off in a little embarrassed way because it had made a mess of it and then two minutes later an older eagle came along with a beautiful white tail swooped down claws in the water picked up a huge great salmon flew straight off as if to say, there you are, youngster, that's just how you do it. And uh, that was that was amazing to watch. I'd got some photos as well, because I've got the camera ready. So we were delighted by that. Um, so that really does stand out. But also what stands out is finding a kingfisher just 100 kilometres or so from here, because that's really, really rare over here. So I did my usual of waiting for about five or six hours for a tiny glimpse of this amazing little bird. And as climate change is kicking in, we are getting more of the birds that I was used to from when I lived in Britain. I moved over here 10 years ago. Anyway, I've waffled on enough. Just to wish you and everybody else, all the listeners, etc. And Facebook group members, I am loving the Facebook group. It is, it is fantastic. It's keeping me going through this dark winter that we've got now. Um, wish you all the best for 2020. Uh, a great happy healthy wealthy and bird rich new year the white-tailed eagle sighting that kieran levine mentioned in episode 68 was also his highlight for the year jeff said this year we went to northern greece and one beautiful spring morning i decided to take off very early while my wife was still sleeping at our hotel on the beach i wanted a change of scenery so i headed for the hills i spent a few hours watching some wonderful birds among the highlights was a honey buzzard. It flew out of a pure blue sky into the mountain gorge. I managed some great views through my binoculars and as it moved away, it slapped its wings above its head in a territorial defence. I was so exhilarated by this observation because for me, honey buzzard is very elusive and is a bird I've seen only a few times. 
and to see it wing clapping on such a perfect spring day in a beautiful place just made for a special encounter. I felt so lucky to see that behaviour and knew I was unlikely to ever see it again. Stephanie from New Jersey, our guest from episode 69, said, I'm going to have to say it was when I had two new yard birds in one tree at the same time, the Wilson's warbler and golden winged warbler. Though a close second place was getting a golden eagle and a northern goshawk over my yard on the same day this past fall. Mark from Portland, Oregon said, I just came into birding this last year as a means of being in the present and to see the wildness around us everywhere, even in the cities. One of my first trips out to try and see some birds, we went to a nature park where we take the dog and we came out of the woods into this big meadow and the trees there were full of cedar waxwings. They're relatively common around here, but I absolutely loved them and was transfixed. And across the way, there was a merlin, I think, chilling on a dead tree, and so many other flittering, twittering birds all around that I could barely see, much less identify. I was transfixed and had to eventually run to catch up with my family as they'd left me far behind. I could watch cedar waxwings all day long. When talking about favourite birding moments from 2019, Gustavo says... For me, there's much more than birds in birding, so finding this podcast would be one. Thank you very much, Gustavo. The red-footed falcon in Wexford would be another one. I even got a pic of it published. Third would be the Portugal trip. Loads of species I hadn't got before. We're actually going back next year. I can't leave out when I spotted a peregrine from my daughter's schoolyard at a neighbouring church tower and got to share that with the children. You know that I love to hear about the birds you're seeing, so tell me about them on Twitter or join our Facebook group. You can find us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash casual birder podcast. There's a podcast page which you can follow as well, but the group is where people are able to post photos and talk about the birds they see. The group is a closed group for listeners of the show and you do have to answer a couple of questions to join, but they're very easy ones. It's a really lovely group, as Karin said. Each Wednesday, I post a fun bird ID quiz on my social media channels. Do look out for that. Follow me on Twitter at CasualBirderPod or on Instagram at CasualBirderPodcast. And you can email me at CasualBirderPod at gmail.com. And do visit my new website at CasualBirder.com. You can find photos and videos of the birds I've seen and blog posts about my birding. Make sure you don't miss any episodes by subscribing to the show. Subscribing is free and you can do it wherever you're listening. Thank you to Randy Braun for designing the artwork for the show. The theme music is Short Sleeve Shirt by The Drones. Thanks to them for letting me use it. Check out their website at dronesmusic.net. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you'll join me again for another episode of the Casual Birder podcast. (laughs) 